Hi, my name is Kristen Selby Gonzalez, and I am the Director of Autism Education for Enzymatica. But most importantly, I am a mother of a little boy named Jackson who is diagnosed with autism. I remember when Jackson first received his diagnosis. At that time, he was two and a half years of age, and he wasn't looking, he wasn't talking, he was doing things like running around a dining room table a hundred times. I was told that Jackson would never look, he would never talk, and that the best thing that I could do for him was to get him to use a spoon and a fork and to get him potty trained by the time he was eight years old. Now, I remember thinking, what happens when he turns eight years old? And at that time, the doctor told me, that's usually the time where most of our children with autism get placed into group homes. Now I must have had some look of disbelief on my face because the doctor went on to tell me that I needed to go home and grieve for the child that I thought I had. He went on to tell me, you know, Miss Gonzalez, you're naive to believe anything else could happen and that once a duck, always a duck. Now, you can imagine how I felt. My stomach got very sick and I drove home and I got into bed and I stayed there for several weeks and then I realized that that wasn't helping me, and for sure it wasn't helping Jackson. So I got out of bed, and I got on the internet, and I started to research. And I found that other parents before me had figured out ways to help their children with things like diet, enzymes, supplementation, biomedical treatments, and play therapy. So we started to implement all of these things into Jackson's life. And so where is Jackson today? Well. Today I have a seven-year-old who's not yet recovered. However, he's completely transformed. I have a little boy who's talking in five to six word sentences. He says things like, good morning, mama, can I help you? As I'm making breakfast. He's learning to read, he's learning to write, and he's this overall happy child. And we believe Jackson is climbing this ladder and that really the sky is the limit. Progress for one of our children provides hope for all of our children. Recovery is not just a hope anymore, it's reality. Today we're going to go shopping because diet is a crucial piece to the puzzle for so many of our children who are sensitive to things like gluten and casein. Well, what is gluten? Gluten is a protein found in wheat and other grains, things like rye, oat, and barley. What is casein? Casein is a protein found in dairy and other dairy-like substances, things like butter, cheese, and milk. I remember when I first received the diagnosis for Jackson and how overwhelming it was to shop in a health food store. So today, not only are we going to look for gluten-free, casein-free options, but we're also going to look at enzymes and why enzymes are so important. We're going to look at the differences between conventional and organic. We're also going to navigate the supplement aisle and even take a quick look into the toxin-free section. So, let's take a trip and have some fun. Let's go shopping. We're here at the market. We're gonna go in and we're gonna see what kind of gluten-free, casein-free selections they have going on here. So come with me and let's go shopping.
Many people have no idea that there's even a gluten-free, casein-free baking aisle. I know I had no idea, but today we have lots of different products to choose from. One that I really like is Bob's Red Mill gluten-free, uh, casein-free flours. They have things like pizza mixes, brownie mixes. One that's really important to know about is the all-purpose baking flour. So if your recipe is calling for flour, you now have a substitute to look into. Now, if baking is just not your thing, which I have to be honest, it's not always my thing, it's wonderful to know about the pre-baked items. Over here we have things like snickerdoodles, which are delicious. Now, one thing to note, this is really important. A lot of times it will say things like nut and gluten-free, and you might think, well, it doesn't say casein-free, so maybe I can't have this. However, with a little bit of detective work, if you turn it over, a lot of times the products will be listed on what's not in them on the sides. Right here it highlights, also made without casein. So if you're looking for a gluten-free, casein-free cookie, you now have lots of different options to look into. How many of our kids' favorites are chicken nuggets, French toast, and waffles? There's even a gluten-free casein version of that as well. Ian's chicken nuggets. Listen to this. No wheat, no gluten, no casein, no milk, no eggs, no nuts, and no soy. You might be thinking to yourself, no flavor, no taste. I have to tell you, I've even tried these myself. They taste very, very good. It's a great substitute for a chicken nugget that your children are already eating, but it's gluten-free, casein-free. Now, my favorite of all time is French toast and waffles. How many of our kids have no idea that it's Saturday and it's six o'clock in the morning? What do they do? They wake up, they want breakfast. So now you can just get out of bed, pop them in the toaster, and climb right back into bed and still give them a wonderful breakfast that's gluten-free and casein-free. So right now we're in the produce section and a lot of us don't know the differences between organic, conventional, and locally grown. So let's take a look at the differences. What is organic? That just means everything from the seed to the final product was produced organically. They are grown without chemical pesticides, fertilizers, or sprays. Even the soil has to be organic, which is really what Mother Nature intended. Here's an interesting fact. Just 2-3% to of the crops in the U.S. are grown organically. However, interest is growing, which is really good for us. Now let's take a look at the conventional section. Well, what is conventional? Conventional produce just means that it may have been treated with pesticides and sprays. And the same goes for the soil. Don't forget, washing your produce will help remove the pesticides and sprays. Most markets offer locally grown produce, but that doesn't always mean organic. However, it is quicker from the grower to the shelf and therefore fresher. you guys really just don't understand the meat department. I know the first time I came in, it was so overwhelming to me. So today we're going to talk to Don the Butcher, who's going to explain things like what's natural, what's conventional, and what's organic. Hi Don, how's it going? Well, how are you? Good! So a lot of us really just don't understand the differences between natural, organic, and conventional when we're buying something like chicken. Can you tell us the differences? The difference always comes down to the farm that the chickens are raised on and the food that's raised for the chickens itself. 
So when they're raising the chicken's food, it has to be done with organic fertilizer, which would be things like kelp, seaweed, fish guts, anything that occurs in that form in nature naturally. So nothing that can be made synthetically or basically broken down into other forms. Now if you were using conventional fertilizer, that would be synthetic fertilizer, and that's man-made chemicals, which would be ammonium phosphate, potassium nitrate, different kinds of phosphates and nitrates that are that have a very strong effect when they seep down into the water table. It's very, it's not that good of an idea for the ecosystem. Um, it does raise the plants well and it does give the plants nutrition, but that nutrition is in a compromise for all the other biodiversity that is sprayed along in that field. Okay, so let me make sure I got this straight. So natural, um, they use some types of um, pesticides, possibly when they're growing, where organic is more mother nature yeah. type of things. And, and there is organic pesticides that you can use, but again, it has to be something found in that form in nature. So they do use things like neem tree oil okay. and, they, and chrysanthemum oil and citrus oil. And that's basically, as you can imagine, it's just extracts from plants or so it's more of a deterrent almost versus of what we normally think of as a pesticide. Yeah, exactly, because most conventional or all conventional pesticides is just diluted poisons. So when they're sprayed along the fields, they're killing everything and just almost killing the plants just enough to where they're still able to live. But it does kill everything there, whether it's something you wanted to kill or not. Okay. And so that's why it is a better idea to farm organically as opposed to conventionally. So conventional. You know, that really clears it up for us. So today I want to get, I think, I think I'm going to go for a pound of the organic chicken. Sure. So if you were planning to freeze this, we would put this in our freezer paper here. And you could always just ask your butcher to wrap it nice and flat so it freezes and defrosts evenly as well to keep as much nutritional value and texture as good as it can be. If you ever have a product that's in a styrofoam or plastic package, which some people are opposed to, feel free to ask us for us to open it up and put it in this freezer paper, and that can always work. Thank you so much, Don. Nice to see you again, Kristen. Nice to see you too. I'll see you next week. All right, have a good weekend. You too. Well, that was really great. We learned a lot from Don, didn't we? Now, I know I love a really good barbecue. So for all you barbecue grillers out there, can you believe there's even a gluten-free, casing-free hot dog? Applegate Farms makes a variety of options to consider when looking for hot dogs. So next time you're in your backyard barbecuing, think about Applegate Farms hot dogs. Our kids are super sensitive and they could be sensitive to things like laundry detergent they could be sensitive to things like cleaning products even what you clean your toilet with what's really great today is there's lots of different products to choose from that are toxin free well first of all what exactly is toxin free well let's look for example in seventh generation toxin free here says it's plant derived what's that mean well basically that means they use things like citrus oil so next time you're thinking about what can you use to clean your bathrooms with? What can you use to wash your clothes in? What can you use to clean that toilet? Well, there's lots of different options. You can use seventh generation to clean your windows. You can use uh, seventh generation for dishwashing soap, even to wash your clothes. So there's lots of great different options and great different choices when you're looking for toxin free. the supplement aisle can seem so overwhelming. Here are some helpful tips. Navigating the supplement aisle is easy if you check the signage for direction. The easiest way to determine the purity of your supplements is to read the labels. And don't forget to ask the staff for assistance. 
market employees pride themselves on service, are well educated, and willing to help if you just ask. Jackson's on a gluten-free, casein-free diet. And yet, when we had his lab work done, we found trace amounts of gluten in his blood. We couldn't figure out where it was coming from. It ended up being in his bubble bath. So it's not just in the foods we give our kids. It could be in bubble bath, shampoos, and even lotions. California Baby has a great gluten-free line to choose from. One of my favorites is the bubble bath. It comes with this cute little wand, and Jackson and I love blowing bubbles together. Right now I want to talk about enzymes. I know with Jackson, even having him on a diet like the gluten-free, casein-free diet, he was still having a lot of digestive issues. And what do I mean by that? Well, he had a bloated little tummy, he was going back and forth between either constipation or diarrhea. I was even finding undigested food particles in his poop. So what exactly is an enzyme? Well, I like to think of them as the workers of the body. So imagine these little Pac-Man going in and helping break up the food for better digestion. And by doing that, you actually are able then to better absorb your vitamins and nutrients. Another thing to think about when you're thinking about enzymes are they go after things that are dead, damaged, and do not belong in the body. So imagine those little Pac-Man going in and helping, in a sense, clear out that debris. They help actually support healthy elimination and digestion. Right now, I want to highlight Enzymetica. What Enzymetica has done is made it very easy and simple for us to find them in a health food store by color coding their products. For example, their digestive line comes in yellow. Well, what exactly is a digestive enzyme? A digestive enzyme is something you take with the first bite of food. So do you remember me talking about those little Pac-Man that go into our body? Well, imagine the digestive enzymes are gonna go in like those little Pac-Men to help break up our foods for better digestion. Next, I want to talk about therapeutic enzymes, which are color-coded in red. Well, what exactly is a therapeutic enzyme? Do you remember me talking about things that were dead, damaged, and do not belong in the body? In a sense, cleaning out that debris? Well, a therapeutic enzyme is taken on an empty stomach to support healthy elimination of things like bacteria, viruses, and yeast. So what makes Enzymetica stand out above the rest? Well, first of all, they have absolutely no fillers in any of their products and they're the highest potency in the market. So next time you're looking for an enzyme, look to Enzymetica, the trusted enzyme experts. Wow, that was a long day of shopping. Sometimes you can spend hours in the store. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Kristen, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Usual today? Yes, I'm dying for a cup of tea. Let me get that for you. Thanks. How many of us walk right past this without even thinking to take time for yourself? So next time you're here, think, I'm going to give myself that extra five minutes and grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. That looks good. Here you go. Oh, thank you so much. No problem. Hey, I'll see you next time. Next week. Have a good one. Bye, Kristen. Bye. So I want to take this moment just to really talk to you guys. I'm a parent right there with you. and. I know there's days where you just think, gosh, I don't want to do this diet anymore. I'm tired of driving to all these different therapies. And there's days that I feel that way too. I just want to throw in the towel. But every time Jackson looks at me or gives me a hug or says I love you, I know that it's all worth it. And really, progress for one of our children provides hope for all of our children. So there's definitely help out there, and for sure there's hope. So I just want to say thanks so much for shopping with me today. I had a lot of fun. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye. Welcome to Cooking with Kristen. Today we're going to make gluten-free, casein-free cookies.
And a lot of the products that we're going to be using are a lot of things we bought today. So what are we going to need today? Well, first we'll need three cups of Bob's Red Mill all-purpose baking flour, one-fourth tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of baking soda, three-fourths tablespoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of vanilla, three eggs, half a cup of applesauce, and four tablespoons of honey. So let's mix it up. We got our flour, our applesauce, and just scoop it all out, our three eggs, our baking soda and salt, woohoo, some vanilla and honey, and can't forget the cinnamon, and then we're just going to mix it all together. until we get a solid consistency. Now that we're done mixing, let's go ahead and get our cookie sheet ready. I recommend using some parchment paper. You can either lightly coat it with coconut oil or you can use something like olive oil. Then what you're going to do is take your cookie, um, lightly flour your hands to make it easier to, uh, to roll the dough. And what you'll do is you'll just uh, go ahead and take it and you'll roll it into um, a ball shape. You'll place it on the, the cookie sheet. And we've already preheated our oven today at 300. And this batch usually makes about uh, three dozen cookies. So now we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven. In about 10 to 12 minutes, you'll have fresh baked gluten-free cookies. Oh, they look really delicious. I can't wait to try one. I always say, a cookie isn't a cookie without a glass of milk. Can you believe this is even gluten-free, casein-free? So until next time, enjoy baking at home. question I get is, my child won't swallow capsules, so how do I give them enzymes? I'd like to show you how I give Jackson his enzymes. So if your child can't swallow capsules, all you have to do is take a capsule and then you'll break it open and you'll add either a little bit of water or juice, whichever is preferred by your child, and then you'll stir until it's dissolved and give that with the first bite of food. So, for those children who need yet another alternative for swallowing capsules, what you can do is twist open a capsule on a bite of something like applesauce and give it to them that way. I wanted to take this opportunity to highlight all who were involved in the making of this DVD donated their time. We have all heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, making this DVD was all about the children and how we can make a difference in their lives. When we came up with the idea of creating this DVD, it was important to us that the intention behind it was one of compassion, love, and dedication to helping our children become healthier. The film crew was selected in a very unique way. We approached Long Beach State Film School and proposed the idea of students writing to us on why they should be selected to be part of this project. We had close to 100 submissions, and two students stood out above the rest, Bonnie Rios and Ryan Clement. They were in charge of putting together their teams for this DVD. We took it a step further and reached out to the community. Top hairstylist and a makeup artist jumped at the chance to be part of this, and were on set the entire week we filmed. All three health food stores, who normally would be competitors, put that aside 
and donated their establishments to allow us to film. Someone in the community even donated his kitchen for the cooking segment. Everyone at Enzymedica and the Autism Hope Alliance are so grateful for each and every one that helped us put this together. We believe through education that knowledge is power, and we are all dedicated to a brighter future for our children. So thank you once again to Bonnie, Ryan, Jessica, Georgette, Brianna, Teddy, Kevin, Brian, Matt, Jeff, Courtney, Bill, Cassie, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Mother's Market, Enzymedica, and the Autism Hope Alliance.